Hi there. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Steve Kearns, and I lead our global content marketing organization for our advertising business at LinkedIn. It's actually my first time in India, and let me say that I've been overwhelmed by the hospitality I've been shown by everyone I've met here since my arrival. I've also been overwhelmed by the jet lag. All joking aside, to experience our B2B community in India is an incredible privilege, and honestly, a career highlight for me. I know how valuable your time is, and I'm so grateful that you've chosen to spend it with us today. Today, you've heard from many of my peers who are experts in product, experts in measurement, experts in financial modeling. Honing disciplines like these are critically important for B2B marketers, who, I'd argue, have much harder jobs than our counterparts in B2C. Why? Well, because it's not very easy to personify an HR software. You know, there's nothing delicious, savory, nothing sweet, nothing visually interesting about, I don't know, professional services. So, you know, my role is a little bit different than those who you've heard from today and from that of my colleagues and my peers who have been on this stage. And it's unique, especially in the B2B technology sector. I say that my role is unique because my team is responsible for telling the stories that drive awareness, that drive engagement and affinity for LinkedIn and LinkedIn's products and services among audiences like yourselves. It's our job to personify the unpersonifiable, which, as any good content marketing leader knows, is not a real word. And it's a pretty cool job to have, if I do say so. At least, you know, when you're not writing a keynote in the middle of the night, in bed, you know, jet-lagged in, in Bangalore, uh, which is maybe, maybe how this keynote came to be. I will not confirm that, but uh, it was definitely written a little bit on the fly. And, you know, in fact, the majority of the content that you've heard today uh, and what I love about my job so much is that, you know, these keynotes, the videos, the calls to action, you know, was somehow touched by myself or a member of my team. And my team markets to marketers, which is great because we have this really unique competitive advantage in the B2B marketing space because we are the audiences that we are marketing to. It's very easy to put ourselves in the shoes of our customers to understand what keeps them up at night because, quite honestly, it's what keeps us up as marketers uh, at night as well. But marketing to marketers can also be a really significant challenge. Why is that? Well, you know, marketers of any group that I have worked with in my career are notoriously prickly. We as marketers are cynics. I always say to my team that our bullshit meters as B2B marketers, as marketing leaders, is especially high. So it becomes very hard to pull the wool over the eyes of a B2B marketer with marketing. So how do my team, how do I, go about breaking through to marketing audiences who, quite frankly, have seen it all? It starts with one word, and that word is creativity. Creativity in the way that we go to market, creativity of message, creativity of medium, creativity of strategy. And it continues with a commitment to what I'm calling storytelling, not feature telling. Now, I know feature telling is also not a real word, uh, but it is a relatively new concept in B2B, this idea that we want to tell stories about people, about emotion, as opposed to telling stories about features. This is what I'm here to talk with you about today. So earlier today, you heard from Nikki on how simplifying our message and leaning into promises, not products, can actually drive better marketing outcomes, from better ad recall to better conversion rates, and ultimately greater marketing sourced revenue. We learned that 56% of award-nominated campaigns that use a clear promise to the customer increase brand health versus only 37% that did not make a clear promise. And when it comes to driving long-term sales growth, that difference is actually even greater, with 67% for customer promises versus only 33% for those with no clear promise. Now, this actually bucks the traditional thinking of what B2B marketing looks like and what we used to think that B2B buyers cared about. For years, we assumed that somehow B2B buyers only made hyper-rational decisions. You know, buying the absolute best solution on its merits and its merits only. The most competitive pricing, the best feature set, perhaps, you know, the easiest integration with existing tools. So we tried to market to those merits. We listed every single product and every single feature in our ad creative. But what happened? We consistently fell short of our goals with this approach. And in the process, B2B became known as this you know, boring stepchild of the marketing world, which is obviously what we are here to debunk. And here's the thing. 
B2B buyers don't put on what I call a B2B buying cap during their nine to five that they immediately put away during their five to nine. They're the same creatures that they are when they're consumers at home. They're creatures driven by emotion. They're creatures driven by relationships. So, you know, that begs the question, what do creatures driven by emotion and relationships actually respond to? They respond to good stories. They respond to stories about people, about what your B2B solution empowers people to do. That is the promise that you're making to your customer. So we've established that 90% of buyers who go through the whole buying process eventually choose a vendor from their day one list. And it's going to be much easier to make that day one list if you have a memorable story. One particular B2B story that touched me came from our parent company, Microsoft. And no, that is not why we're featuring it. Uh, rather, I believe it's a really beautifully executed campaign and a really great example of what storytelling, creative execution, and a clear promise can do for a B2B brand. The story chronicles the efforts of a small events agency pulling together a once-in-a-lifetime wedding experience for a couple on an incredibly short timeline. Dare I say it's not so dissimilar from our own experience planning this event. It's called Empowering Dreams, and it's really something special. I'm so excited for you to take a look at it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and roll the clip. Hello, hello everybody. Uh, hi, oh, Mr. Kostov. Hi, this is our team from The Wedding hello. Works. I believe that we are here to discuss about your... Uh... My wedding. Oh. Ghabrai ya nahi, apni bivi se dubara shadi kar raha hu. Oh, of course. So, this is an anniversary celebration, right? No, no, no. It's a wedding. Isay koi silver jubilee ya golden jubilee celebration mat samaj li jayega. So, I think what she meant was... Uh... Okay. मेरे लिए शादी एक सपना है। It has to be perfect। आप बच्चे लोग ये सब कर पाएंगे ना? सर आज से एक साल पहले पापा की केटरिंग ऑफिस में वेडिंग वर्क्स भी एक सपने जैसा लगता था। So we know how precious dreams are। आप बिल्कुल बेफिकर रहिए। It would be a wedding to remember, I promise। Okay। So I think we'll get back with our ideas। Thank you, nice talking to you guys। Thank you so much, sir। Team, please stay on the call। All right. Guys, A, I wasn't expecting Mr. Kossif to be this young. And B, I've already committed to his 10 days timeline. What? This is impossible, Pihu. Sh should we just recycle our existing designs? No. All right, Saurav, uh, do you have anything to add? Saurav. Oh, sorry, uh, I was speaking on mute, but I'm good. I'm good. Let's take some time to absorb the brief and reconnect in like two hours. Okay. Thoughts? Black and white. It's timeless, it's classy, and it's, it's chess. The whole wedding would look like a chess pool. I think we should keep it very subtle. Uh, pastel colors, organic food. My landlord is... Enough. It's a wedding, not a tea party. Guys, white and pink roses. White for the age, pink for the love. Guys, wait. Why are we focusing on Kostav's age? Let the love be the focus. She's right. Let's celebrate them, their love. Sort of, what do you think? Yeah, same thought. Hello. Hi, everybody. So, this is Mukti. Hi, sir. Hi, ma'am. It's so nice to finally meet you. One minute. We promised to make this wedding a grand spectacle for your family and friends. Sir, uh, could you please click on the three dots and uh, put on the live captions? 
Perfect. So as I was saying, I'll take you through the decor slides. As you can see here, our palette will be pink and uh, there'll be roses spread across the venue. You two are already married. So why are you married now? Why do you want to marry in a court? What do you want to marry in a court? I had a big mind to marry in a court. I had a big mind to marry in a court. 27 years ago, we had money and we had no permission to marry in a house. Now, I want to give her a dream wedding. It's lovely. I had promised her. Sort of, wake up, it's urgent. What happened? The fire is... No. Okay, I need 25,000 Sarsoki flowers urgently. What? Yes. The wedding is day after tomorrow. And why? Because this time, it needs to be perfect. The way Mukti dreamt it. Sort of, call up the vendors in Punjab and get it ASAP. Alright? But, but how okay, will bye. I... When the client feels good, then what is the problem? After waiting so many years, if it's just good, then it's not good, right, Papa? It's a son of a business. It's not a relationship. How will it change in three days? In the middle of the day, it's going to be bad. Papa, I don't know. I'll just figure out something. You think, I'll talk to you tomorrow. You have updates. It doesn't grow in Punjab and this is not the season. I already approved the idea from Kostov. Should I put back the roses then? You will say sorry, but we will give you the whole fruit in three days. Look, I'm going to give you the whole fruit in three days. There are 25,000 tehniyas. It's very urgent. 25,000? It's not a gift. Okay, you arrange it, right? How will it happen, madam? Where should it be? Where should it be? No, no. We will try, madam. You can't do it. You don't have to commit to it. You don't have to commit to it. Mukti was a big mind to marry with Dhundham. That time, there was no picture in that time. In which he had to wear the kajol, he had to wear all of them. Look, I'm going to give him a drink wedding. Look, I'm going to give him बिजनेस स्मॉल हो या मीडियम सपना बड़ा होना चाहिए सो टू टॉक अबाउट दिस कैंपेन एंड टू आउटलाइन हाउ माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एंड इट्स क्रिएटिव पार्टनर्स 
or thinking about up-leveling their approach to creativity, I'm thrilled to welcome Sanchayeta Verma, CEO of India at Cara, and Rahul Dutta, Country Director of Marketing at Microsoft. Welcome. <laughs> First off, uh, I tear up every single time I watch that spot. So congratulations on, on you know, such a successful, beautiful campaign. It's, you know, there's those moments in marketing where you think about uh, what made you get into this profession um, and you know, some of the impact you can have through storytelling. And it you know, was just a really powerful spot to watch. So you know, thank you for, for bringing this today. Thank you for your time. And, and we're so excited to dig into this conversation. Thank you for the opportunity, Steve. Yeah. So we can go ahead and get started. I would love for each of you to introduce yourselves, share a little bit more about your role, um, and then we can dive into you know, kind of how you think about your partnership across uh, Microsoft and, and Cara. I would love to hear what your day-to-day -day looks like, uh, but then also you know, what, your, what your role was with regard to this campaign. Yeah. So I think uh, Microsoft is one of our most uh, close clients across the globe, uh, and we're working well, really closely with them in many areas. And what is also very unique about Microsoft, which is, of course, to this entire team out here, is that you know, they have to really be uh, sharp focused and you know, be talking to only those uh, core st stakeholders and the usual things in B2B where there's no spillover. Uh, yet, how are we able to do it and break through and make a, a big mark? And uh, that is where I think we have found a very interesting uh, form of working with Microsoft, which is in this whole space of brand to demand. And I think this is kind of a, a perfect example of, of doing that, because typically in uh, B2B, you think about the lower part of the funnel, but really what trickles down to the lower part of the funnel is from the upper part and the middle part. And we've been able to work on a full funnel partnership with Microsoft on B2B, and I think that's one of the biggest things that we have achieved with them. Steve, I'm the country director for Microsoft in India, and uh, me and my team at this point of time, when we conceptualized this program, was, uh, was, was really trying to understand the India that we just started to get to know, which is SMB. Um, and uh, that's, why, that's how we've you know, designed this concept. Uh, and of course, there was a close partnership with both Kara as well as LinkedIn, just to understand on, hey, what's the audience set? So there's, there's a lot of work that gone in, in terms of understanding the audience on the platform and uh, you know, what are the different uh, subjects which are right now being consumed and how to work towards that. And then, of course, the story came in and we worked on that. It's fantastic. You know, we, uh, we talk a lot about this concept of creativity in B2B. We were chatting about it as we were, we were preparing in, in, in the speaker room for, for the panel as well. Um, one of the things we're trying to debunk here at LinkedIn is this idea that um, creativity is somehow dichotomous from performance or divergent from performance in the sense that if I tell a good story, if I don't focus specifically on, on the features, the products, what have you, that somehow we're not going to uh, achieve the, the business outcomes that, that we want to achieve. And you know, I'd love to hear your perspective on kind of what we just talked about around creativity being a driving force in B2B. Where do you think the industry is at? Um, where do you think that opportunity lies in terms of how we can continue to push ourselves as B2B marketing leaders? to drive forward that creative, to put the story first, um, you know, ultimately still in service of the goals that we have um, and in service of the, the businesses that we, we, we operate and the businesses that, that we're, we're beholden to. So I'd love to hear your perspective on, uh, on where we're at on that creative journey. Sure, shall I go first? Sure. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think, uh, you know, typically in B2B, of course, because you're trying to reach out to some very rational buyers. And I think you put on, I, I love the slides that you put that the person who is taking that rational decision has a whole life around them. Mm -hmm. I think the also, th also the big thing is that what is that person trying to do with the solution? You know, what are his or her aspirations at work in life? And uh, there is one thing uh, that is really critical in every business, whether it is B B2B or B2C, is this whole thing of mental availability and physical availability, right? And uh, I like the term that Byron Sharp had used out there called building deep memory structures. And that's really because we are interacting. So with Microsoft, uh, I think Intel has the best, I, know, I, I love that example of Intel inside. So that's a deep memory structure which is there in our mind and it takes effort, emotions, and really connecting with consumers to be able to build that. 
And that is where the creativity needs to come in. Uh, because even from a performance perspective, of course, there has to be the combination of the right brain and the left brain. But how do you curate it? And I'm sure you would be doing in content what we call is the content curation, where I have a mix of the emotions and the rational. And how do I curate that entire thing so that together it is the, the sum is greater than the parts? Right? So I think this is something which are really, really important to kind of keep in mind. Otherwise, in this cluttered environment, you may not be able to connect with your uh, buying committee, your influencer committee, and all the effort may not really lead to the kind of results that you're really looking to. That's, that's uh, my perspective, and Rahul, do please Sure, share. I just want to understand from the audience how many people, show of hands, are related to B2B marketing in some way or the other, from a brand side or the agency side, right? So I can, I can, on behalf of all of you, can say putting creativity in B2B is not easy, yeah. right? Uh, and we know that because the way we are structured today um, is there are influencers and there are decision makers within the organization. You're fighting for the share of wallet between a creative campaign, which is, you know, a full funnel campaign versus what we can do here and now. Uh, so how do we solve for now and build for future at the same time? So I think that's what we're very important. Um, and, and it's very, very important in terms of how do we put in that creativity as a gravy, which just get the business priorities, the marketing priorities, and the results that we are aiming at together. So I think um, that's the core, and that's, that's how we've kind of sold the, the whole campaign inside as well. I think the selling starts inside. And that's how we kind of pitched the campaign inside where we had the mission of the Microsoft at one level. There was a business priority of reaching out to SMBs. Uh, and, the, and we thought that, okay, what's the best way to then, what's the best platform? And how do we partner with Kara and everybody else to make sure that we tell the right story? Right. Well, I think what's, what's so important about what you shared too is this idea of uh, you know, mental availability and, and really tapping into the emotion and the motivation behind why people are... are showing up at work, coming to work. Uh, you know, there are stats out there that say that people spend anywhere between 60 and 80% of their, you know, waking hours on this earth in, in some capacity at, at work. So, you know, of course people are going to have emotions and intrinsic motivations for wanting to do what they do, hopefully having some, some kind of passion behind, uh, behind the work that they do. And I think, you know, the piece that, that we shared today really does an incredible job about that. I mean, as someone who, um, like I said, first time in India, um, coming from a very different cultural context in America, I think there were so many, you know, narrative arcs and structures in this that are extremely relatable across cultures and across boundaries. And um, no matter where you're from in the world, generally speaking, you can relate to a concept of, hey, I have this really big project at work that I need to deliver. Um, or, you know, I, I want to renew my vows with, uh, with my partner, with someone who I love, with a family. You know, it's... it's something that is so universal um, and taps into something that we can all relate to that um, makes this really stick. Um, you know, so I'd, I'd love to explore more, Rahul, how you, you know, we talked about selling this work into a B2B organization. Uh, it is not the easiest thing in the world to say, hey, I want to go make an eight minute long film uh, that doesn't necessarily tell the direct product story of um, you know, all, all of the products that, that you're looking to market. You, know, you talked about how you found that pull through and how you connected it back to performance and how you sold it into the organization. I'd love to, to hear a little bit more about what that thought process was like, what some of those conversations looked like. Um, you know, I think the practical takeaway for folks in the audience is that you know, at some scale, we're all going to go back to our desks and we will say, hey, I need to sell in a piece of creative work to my organization and make sure that it also doesn't go to waste and that it's not just an eight minute film, that there's actually pull through to ensure that folks across the organization know how to leverage it, understand the why, understand the value story, uh, you know, and then really make sure that you're getting the right leverage out of something, uh, something like this, which obviously requires a, a very you know, heavy level of, of production investment. So it'd be great to hear, hear how you thought about doing that. Sure, Steve. Uh, first of all, thank you very much because you've sat through the eight minute film <laughs> when we are used to the avalanche of 30-second videos that we all used to. Uh, that's one. But, um, you know, when we conceptualized this, uh, it was, we faced challenges at multiple levels. First is just to convince uh, the leadership in terms of, you know, 
uh, having a campaign like this, then of, of course, the duration was another challenge. Uh, so how we work towards it is basically, first we've understood what's the SMB landscape right now. So we've done a bit of a listening, understood what are the spaces which are already taken by different people. So it's about, there is a space which is taken by banking. There's a space which has already been taken by some other category. So there are spaces which were already rich in terms of communication with SMB. We don't want to be another brand that kind of go and down there and have that conversation. That pulls us to what's that one space which is core to us, which is the Microsoft core mission, which is about empowering every individual and uh, organization to achieve more. We said if empowering is a, is a right area that we need to work on. So we've taken that space, that's one part. Then we've taken the business challenge, which was about how do we connect or build affinity that you mentioned over a period of time. Um, and we know that in a B2B space, trust is at an all-time low uh, with all surveys that you might have seen over a period of time. So how do we build the affinity? Uh, and that was the first part. And the third was about not just pitching an idea of a film. There was a whole campaign in terms of it, how we build, saying the fact that, okay, it's not just that one film. This is the tide that will lift all the boats. We'll start with this, then they'll be followed by 60 second product videos where same characters, same story will then go into the product. Uh, we've done the photo shoot at the, when we were shooting this film as well. So the same images will be on the website. We'll use the same messages when we go onto the product side. So the idea was to have a bigger engagement pool of that first party data that you will create. After that, expose them to the product and after that expose them to if there are any other communications that is required, but have a consistency of message, imagery, tonality, everything that goes down there. Uh, and I'll tell you an interesting story. When we've uh, first presented the campaign, um, uh, the marketing team, of course, there, was, there were marketing decision makers at that point of time were not very keen to go, go through with this on multiple levels because of A, it's a, large, it's a big film and you know, there are other parts of it. So we said, okay, let's do one thing. Let's get the business team inside. Let's get the SMB team inside. The, the, the SMB team in, uh, in Microsoft India. And let them see the film and react to it. And so that we can take a collective feedback and you know, do the edits in one go. We've got the SMB leaders and their team in one room, played the film. Um, we saw a small tear on the left eye of, of the SMB. Um, probably you could have related personally from the story. But uh, um, that's the thing, and they, were, they loved it. They said, yeah, it's, it's good to go. And that gave the confidence to the rest of the marketing team as well. So you got your business stakeholders first inside, showed them the thing, got their buy-in, and, and worked, on that, uh, you know, worked on that overall thing. So I think you've solved multiple problems um, with, with that one thing that you need to do. And I believe you need to build that trust. It doesn't happen overnight that suddenly I go with a film idea and, and everybody will agree to it. I think there were smaller experiments that we have done. There's another great film called Laddu, which we have done for education, about a story of a guy called, or a small kid called Laddu, um, and, and you can see that on our channels as well. So we've done something for education, we've done some other small, small work to build that confidence within the ecosystem to have that buy-in from the stakeholders, and then you know this one got approved over a period of time. Yeah. That's fantastic, and, and Sanjay, I know earlier we were talking about how um, you and, and your partners at, at Cara have helped Microsoft really with that pull through um, yes. and finding the right audiences to put this creative in front of, making sure that these different creative formats are, um, are resident and, and can tell a very consistent story, uh, both at the, you know, I would say at the brand level, at the product level, to be able to deliver the, the results that you all wanna see. Uh, talk to us a little bit more about how that worked and how you partnered with Microsoft in, in, in that regard, because I think that's also another really important point to stick here is yes. that you need the right strategy yeah. behind you know, a heavy investment piece like this to be able to get those results you wanna see and communicate back to the business that, hey, say we are, are building the case for why emotionally driven creative is actually much more effective, even at the, I would say, lower levels or bottom, bottom funnel, we have to continue to build that case by demonstrating the results. So I'd love to hear more about that. So I think uh, what is unique, like I said, that uh, we ensure that we're not just focusing on the bottom of the funnel, but we're also looking at the top of the funnel, to the middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel. 
and then the journey in each of these is very different so for instance in the middle of the funnel as every b2b marketer knows is a longer period of engagement but the rich first party data that we are also creating by smaller engagements for instance there was this uh, great initiative that we did with them has just won a smarties award uh, recently which is a great forum for anything in the uh, tech space uh, was all about creating uh, getting 100 uh cxos to actually come on and register with an event so that we could have a long term connection with them and continuously engage with them uh by doing this uh middle of the funnel engagement we were able to slowly bring them into the bottom of the funnel and the other thing like rahul mentioned it was a combination of again right brain and left brain so for instance we had this video which was really talking about the story but we also mixed it with rational creators which were actually talking to uh, the people in terms of how they have to use um, you know what are the products what are the features and how does it help them so this is this combination and kind of planning it out over a long period of time we were able to get to really powerful um, deliveries and the roas was really really strong as rahul could probably uh, also tell and uh, really i would like to add that out here i think design thinking principles as whole this whole thing of trying to figure the person and i think you said something about personas and how do you uh, you know and how do you make a persona out here but the point is that if you think of the person in their uh, avatar as they are in their office and you get into their shoes and you fill in with empathy what are the things that they are trying to achieve and then isolate from there that that thing that really really makes is important i think in this particular film is a great example where this girl is so ambitious and she really wants to give a product which is absolutely perfect and and the product is giving that solution so it's a solution story uh, that is coming out i think it's very important for us as b2b marketers to be able to create those personas and bringing those kind of content you know some of the b to c learnings to come into b to b and make it even more powerful right. so it's really a combination of uh, planning across the funnel right. and also seeing what kind of content what kind of shoulder content and what kind of events that we are doing in terms of one on one interactions and building in with our first party data in fact linkedin signals so there is in fact a product that we have created with you uh, which of course is available to everybody but we are very proud as densu and kara to be the first ones to go ahead with it mm -hmm. where your entire audience insights is coming into us and we are marrying it with client first party data mm -hmm. and a lot of your signals and then it sits on our densu marketing cloud whereby through that through the same engine we are able to reach out to people on those interests and a far richer engagement and content strategy is building so i'm really looking forward to play that out to its full extent yeah then no, that's fantastic i mean i think the one of the most important things that i want to put a point on in in this conversation in terms of a takeaway for this audience is the idea that you and we were chatting about this earlier today that this campaign actually outperformed some of yeah. the you know some of the creative that was maybe a little bit more generic or feature specific so it is it's not only that creativity is important it's not only that telling a story is important because you're going to drive memory and recall at the top of the funnel it's actually going to result in you know significant roas um you know it's it's going to perform better even as you're thinking about it through a bottom of funnel context so i'd love to hear um uh, you know without sharing kind of specific results and numbers how how you think about telling that story um internally and and what you've seen in your lived experience of hey this actually performed better and you know being able to continue to beat that drum and say if we do this this will happen um we're going to have a better outcome if we actually prioritize the story uh and 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 here's why So I think multiple things at 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 one level from a di digital standpoint it gave us a pool of engaged audience that over a period of time got our CPLs and CPEs down uh that's that's for sure um uh, but uh, you know it also helped us over a period of time to just have consistency of our message and imagery and what we like to play uh and where do we want to play from you know from a brand residence perspective uh on digital on performance marketing at events so it was just this consistent message which was going down over a period of time uh 
Um, and it's very important to have that connection because I'll, I'll give you another insight while you watch the TV, uh, watch the film. There was, there was two things. There is, there's a startup ecosystem in India that we all know and we all love. And Bangalore is a capital for startup. And that's the, what we call as a new money. There's an old money. And if you remember the, the film, it was a second generation entrepreneur who wants to turn his dad's business into a wedding planning uh, and kind of take it to another thing. And the insight that we cracked after listening to a lot of data and after speaking to a lot of SMBs was that this second generation or third generation of entrepreneurs wants to have their own uh, way of looking at things. They want to have their own legacy. Uh, they want to work in that certain way. So empowering that grit, em empowering that passion was very empowering, was, was very important. And that's the reason we, we stuck to that particular part and then built on that saying, hey, there are other spaces in SMB which is taken by a bank or which is taken by a competition, which is taken by other people over a period of time. There's this unique space, which I believe will have a common ground between culture, um, between what a brand stands for today, and what do we want to do with the category, which is teams that we want to work on. I think it also demonstrates a, a really core understanding of, of your audience, because you know, that's an important part of marketing as well, is, is you know, I talked about this a little bit earlier in the keynote, that uh, there's a lot of signaling that needs to happen in, in our world, in all of the jobs that we do, that, hey, I understand you. I understand your challenges. I understand your motivations. I understand what keeps you up at night. Um, you know, I understand what you feel when you make a purchase um, and what you want that purchase to help you accomplish. And that's where you know, I think the fun really comes in, in in the jobs that we get to do, is you have this ability to um, tell these really beautiful stories. So, you know, I know we're, we're coming up closer to time. So I wanna make sure that, that I give both of you the opportunity to share with this audience um, kind of a quick recap on, on what do you think the, the takeaway should be for how folks should think about infusing creativity into their work. I mean, if I'm to, if I'm to start, the insight that you've all shared is that you need to think about how you you know, you create a story, but that story needs to be pulled through across different audiences, across different mediums, um, and at different altitudes, honestly, from a storytelling perspective to ensure that you're not only hitting on sort of that brand message, but the product message as well, and that that is consistent. Um, and then it's making sure you have that alignment and making sure that you can sell this into your cross-functional partners, because that allows you to, that allows you to really get the buy-in you need to make sure that the piece gets the leverage that it deserves relative to the investment that you've made, time investment, financial investment, what have you. So I'll start with you, Sanchayata. Yeah, so I think uh, what I would like to leave everyone behind is that you know we, we are in this world of clutter. And I think in a lot of the B2B products, which uh, I am sure that people are, all of us are kind of talking about in our portfolio, uh, they are in the tech space and no place is as cluttered as the tech space. You know, there are so many solutions which are out there. So there is a lot of confusion. How do you stand out out there? And that is why I think creativity is actually all the more important out mm -hmm. here so that your solution and the way the relationship that you are building is something which is so deep and stand out so much that you are able to create that incremental value to every communication and interaction that you're doing with your B2B consumer. Um, that's what I would like to say. And I think the learnings that we are able to do and the experiments that we are able to put for this would be again a very important thing yeah. for all of us taking together. Rahul? Yeah. I've read a beautiful quote today on LinkedIn which said, uh, Electricity was not discovered by continuously improving the candles, right? So it's very important that we, we break through because all our performance marketing campaigns will taper over a period of time. Uh, you know, there'll be a diminishing margins of return at a certain point of time. But having said that, the key takeaway for all the B2B marketers is to first get the house in order so that you can, over a period of time, build on something which is already there. Um, and you'll not face a lot of resistance from, from the stakeholders that you're trying to buy in. Start with small things, small experiments, show the results over a period of time. And I think customer listening is very, very important, uh, which is, you know, if given a chance, we have our social and digital lead, Aparna here, and if she permits me, I will ban some of the words from every B2B marketing, which is transform anything that starts with re. Because every other post that you see on, on that particular thing, you know, have these similar words, similar tone, so how do you differentiate yourself? Start with small experiments, 
a, a copy, a post, of a picture, or a solution where basically you're just solving for your customer first, um, build that confidence within the ecosystem, and then go for a larger campaign. Fantastic. Well, uh, Rahul Sancheda, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been an incredible privilege to chat with you both. And uh, we're so, so excited to, to watch the, the growth of your continued partnership. And thank you so much for, for sharing with, with the audience. Thank, thank you, you so much, Steve.